Welcome back, fast food fans. Today on Fast Food Face Off, we're gonna be doing the ultimate mac and cheese review. Let's crush some calories. Now that spooky season is behind us, we're going into fall, we're going into November. That usually means holiday food, right? I promised you guys something special and we're gonna get it kicked off with my favorite side dish, mac and cheese. We have Boston Market, we have Popeyes, KFC, Chick-fil-A, and Panera. Let's get it. First up, we have Chick-fil-A. I went with these guys first because they're the newest to the macaroni and cheese game, which is surprising because it kind of lends itself to everything else that they have on the menu. Let's see how it tastes. First bite. So that's really good. Super cheesy, super salty, a nice consistency. The pasta is done well, it's not overcooked. They even have, I don't know whether you guys can see it, but the crispy bits, which are kind of, you know, my favorite. I don't know, your guys' mileage may vary, but I love when you get a little bit of that brown, kind of bubbly cheese on there. And this is pretty impressive mac and cheese considering this is a fast food place. What's up, fast food fanatics? Today, I'm gonna to be hitting you off with some fun mac and cheese facts and history, so stay tuned. It makes sense that Chick-fil-A would do such a good mac and cheese. Everything else on their menu is pretty killer, and it's a Southern company, so it would be really disappointing if something that's a comfort side like mac and cheese wasn't done well by them. They, the cheese itself is nice. It coats the macaroni and cheese real well. It's not congealed in like an unappealing way. Like sometimes you'll get that microwavable mac and cheese where it ends up being uh, chunks of cheese in a bad way. It's kind of like, you know, congealed mess. This, it feels like it's real cheese, real pasta, and made by people that really appreciate mac and cheese. Like me. Not only does everyone seem like they have a mac and cheese recipe nowadays, but they're also convinced that theirs is the best. Don't believe me? A Google search for macaroni and cheese recipes returns 52.8 million results. That's a lot of cheese. Even though this is salt and cheese forward, the balance here is really nice. It's not uh, just a sodium bomb. Sometimes when you get mac and cheese, you only taste the salt and you're not really getting enough of the cheese in my opinion. With this, you're definitely getting the cheese aspect. It's really well done. And it's, again, not surprising because Chick-fil-A's food is very good, you know, outside of their sides. And um, this is no exception. Last bite. An unappreciated fast food place, in my opinion, Boston Market. The reason why I've been so reluctant to bring them into the fold and anything that I've done is I just had a very bad traumatic experience with them when I was younger that if you guys want to know about, ask me in a DM or in the comment section. But that aside, the mac and cheese looks good. They went with rotini instead of elbow pasta. I'll let you guys get a look. First bite. Not bad, the rotini definitely adds a different texture than shells or elbow macaroni would. It's a little under cheesed in my opinion. I mean, obviously it looks like there's plenty of cheese, but whatever cheese flavor you would be getting, it's just a, a, a little, you know, underwhelming in my opinion. Ever wonder why mac and cheese is typically shells or elbow pasta? That's because these two types have just the right amount of surface area for all that cheesy goodness to hold on to. So there's a good amount of salt on this, which is helping it. The pasta itself, it's a little overcooked in that it's um, a little soggy, a little mushy. I like to have a bit of a bite to my pasta, almost al, al dente, maybe not quite al dente, but this is more on, uh, on the side of mushy. But I, I tend to like a little bit of a bite to the pasta that I have. Still, not too bad. So, if you're new to the page, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. If you're not, or even if you are, make sure to like this video and to share it around, please, so that we can grow that tasty vibe tribe. Back to the mac and cheese.
There's definitely a buttery vibe going on here that's appreciated. I don't know if it's actual butter or some sort of butter flavoring to make it feel like it's more of a home style mac and cheese, but you do get kind of a rich butteriness, a creaminess that, that it's, it's being noticed and appreciated. Last bite. Next up, we have Panera. I'm really interested in trying this because one, it looks delicious. Two, it's shells, and I also think that they went with like a white cheddar. So I'm curious to see how that plays with the flavor profile and being different from the other companies that went the more traditional route. Let you guys get a look. First bite. Yeah, so right away, you notice the difference in the um, the shells, one, and then in the, the flavor of the cheese. It's just a subtle difference, but I think with the way that Panera markets and brands their other stuff, their sandwiches, their soups, the stuff that would accompany this, it makes sense why they went this route, and uh, I, I like it. It tastes really good. In 1937, towards the end of the Great Depression, boxed macaroni and cheese became popular due to its low cost. It was so popular, in fact, Kraft Foods sold over 8 million boxes its first year. The pasta is cooked pretty well on this. It's a little on the softer side, but there still is a, a toothier texture to it, more so than Boston Market. The sauce that they have uh, for the mac and cheese, it's almost like a bechamel, if you're familiar with that and it's really, really delicious. It's, it's creamy, it's luxurious, it coats the pasta in a really nice way, and uh, it's an appealing uh, bite. If you guys can, head on over to our Instagram. We always put some fun stuff on there for you guys to kind of participate in, like some polls, and uh, I might have something that, you know, will uh, get your interest peaked as far as maybe some other side items or some fall festivities going in through the month of November. A couple more bites left and then I'm gonna move on to Popeyes. Next up, we have Popeyes. I've never actually had Popeyes mac and cheese. I've had a lot of their other sides on the menu but uh, this does look pretty good. Let's see how it tastes. Let you guys get the first look. First bite. Okay, so this is gonna be a fast food face off first. This reminds me of the macaroni and cheese from Chef Boyardee. But this is definitely a first time where something I've eaten reminds me of something that's a packaged good product. The reason why I say that is because anybody who's ever had the Chef Boyardee mac and cheese, it is not very good. And neither is this. We're, we're, this, is, this is a video of first, but honestly, this is not good enough to the point of where I, I genuinely don't think that it's worth my calories. Your guy's mileage may vary on that, but I don't, I don't think I need to eat, you know, 16 ounces of this macaroni and cheese to let you know that the, the flavor on this is just not very good. It's super artificially cheesy. The macaroni is soft and creamy um, as far as the cheese sauce is concerned. So, I mean, there's some at least redeemable qualities, but at the end of the day, it really is about that taste and this is just not good. Last up, we got KFC. Hopefully they do better than Popeyes. <laughs> Looks pretty good. I'll let you guys get first look. First bite. So not bad. I'll say that this reminds me of like a, like a decent box mac and cheese. It, it's creamy, there's butteriness there. It's a little bit of a sodium bomb if I'm being honest. I wouldn't be surprised that this is probably more like cheese product and not actual cheese. So it, it, it loses that kind of cheese essence that, you know, it's salty, but it's not just sodium. You know what I mean? Like there is that, that, that flavor of cheese that you just can't 
imitate with fake cheese or fake butter or fake anything. It needs to be real cheese. And this just tastes like, you know, good quality, maybe Velveeta shells and cheese kind of box macaroni. So there's not a whole lot that can be said about this. It's, you know, really mushy pasta, salt forward. The the most positive thing that I could say about this is that at least it's, it's creamy and there's a good amount of that cheese sauce. It's not a bad effort for some place like KFC, definitely better than Popeyes. I'm just gonna power through this so that we can get to the final review. On September 23rd, 2010, Chef John Fulce with Cabot Creamery set a Guinness World Record for the world's largest macaroni and cheese. It weighed roughly 2,469 pounds or about as much as a Hyundai Accent. That's a lot of possibilities. Last bite. Final review time, right? I'm gonna keep this short and sweet for you guys, unlike the macaroni and cheese that I just ate. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of the cost first, the calories, and then just kind of my final opinion on everything. The cheapest was $4.19 from KFC. Next would have been Boston Market at $4.89. Popeyes was somewhere in the middle of the road at about $5.11. Chick-fil-A was at $6.89, and to no surprise of anybody, Panera was the most expensive at just under $9. Now, all of this is pretty close in calories for the most part between KFC and Chick-fil-A. It's about between 500 and 650 calories somewhere in that ballpark. And then Panera just head and shoulders above everybody else as far as calories for some reason. It was somewhere in the ballpark of about 1,000 calories. I genuinely don't think that it's worth the extra four to 500 calories, but your guys' mileage may vary on that. All of that being said, all of that being considered, this is a no-brainer right? The winner here is Chick-fil-A. It's in its own other character or category rather. You guys got to comment down below and let me know if you've had it, if you're going to have it, if you want to try it. Let me know in the comment section. It's phenomenal. So good that you should go out, grab that macaroni and cheese, get a whole bunch of it, bring it home, put it in a freezer until Thanksgiving, Put that in a casserole dish, bring it to your Thanksgiving meal, and watch your mom and everybody else say that you're the next Paula Dean. It's me, Paula Dean. It's that good. It blows my mind how nobody's talking about how good that that Chick-fil-A mac and cheese is. It tastes homemade. It does not taste like a fast food mac and cheese. That all being said, everywhere else was kind of middle of the road except for Popeyes. Let's not forget just how bad that was. They were low-key taking it off the menu in 2020. I found it at my local Popeyes. You guys might be able to as well. It does not taste good. Let us let it die with everything else in 2020, right? The other companies, Boston Market, KFC, Panera, they were somewhere in the middle of the road. I think that you can liken Boston Market and Panera to something like a really good good box macaroni and cheese. Like Panera kind of reminded me of the, the white cheddar Velveeta shells and cheese. It was pretty much on par with that. So if that's your vibe and you kind of dig on that, then Panera is definitely gonna be where you guys wanna go. I would say Boston Market and KFC reminded me a bit more of, say something like a Kraft macaroni and cheese, you know, kind of that artificial orange powder that you put in. I'm not judging anybody. I know that that's kind of one of those nostalgic things for some people. And if that's something you vibe on, then I think KFC and Boston Market is gonna be where you guys would probably spend your mac and cheese money. Thanks again for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you joining us for our first week of our holiday food series. We're gonna be doing a few more weeks of this with some real fun and exciting stuff. Let you guys vote on some of it. And remember, if you are what you eat, always eat amazing.